Hey guys, really quickly, let's try to finish up our notes on the solar system. So you're going to have to add in a couple of bullet points here uh, in your notes because there's only two. So however you want to do it, just add in these couple of bullet points here. So our solar system is our sun and our sun is the center. And everything in our solar system orbits our sun. So we have eight planets, a little more than 10 dwarf planets, asteroids, meteors, comets, and many, many, many moons. In terms of the planets, as you see, we have the first four planets and the next four planets, and you see just how much bigger Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are. And then Pluto's thrown in here still because this is an outdated picture. This is a much better picture of our solar system's organization. With the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, the first four planets. And then the asteroid belt that exists in between Mars and Jupiter. And Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And these things below it are the various moons that they have. Now, Jupiter and Saturn have lots of moons, like 60, 70 moons. Uh, so these are just a few of the more important moons. Then after Neptune, you have something called the Kuiper belt. And most of the dwarf planets, except for like one, are in the Kuiper belt. So Pluto's out in here, as well as Charon, it's, uh, it's moon or dwarf planet. Uh, as well. And there's lots of other dwarf planets and other things that are out here, like some some comets and others, some, some you know, objects like that. Then you get the Oort cloud way out here, which is the farthest you get. Uh, this is a really small things, loose gases, comets still exist out here as well. Once you get past the Oort cloud, you're, you're done. That's it. You're out of our solar system and you're in the rest of space. So of the planets, we have Mercury, Venus, Mars and Earth. These are the terrestrial planets. You guys are also going to have to add this into your notes. Add a section of your notes, you know, create a bunch of space for yourself in your notes, type in types of planets, and then terrestrial, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth. These are considered rocky planets. And we've gone through these pictures before of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So then you're going to add in also Jovian. Jovian is the name for the other four planets. And these are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets are either uh, gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn or ice giants like Uranus and Neptune. But they're cold and gas and they're not solid. So there's nothing to land on these planets. And again, we went through photos of these ones once before as well. So we'll just kind of skip past this to here. Actually, so this is the last thing that I'm going to have you guys really focus in on. Uh, this is the um, last part of your reference table that deals with astronomy. After this, from here on out, there's really nothing else about um, astronomy that's in your reference table. So it's all going to be stuff you just have to know. This is a solar system data chart. And what it does is it has the different objects that you're talking about in space on the left and a whole bunch of different pieces of information about them. If you have me for a lab, you guys have done a lab on this stuff. Um, and it shows you the different planets and their distance from the sun, period of revolution, that's how long it takes that object to orbit the sun, that's equal to a year for us, right, because one year on Earth is 365 days. So each of these numbers, which gets bigger the farther out you get, this is what a year is like on each one of those objects. Period of rotation is a day, so you see for us it's 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds, that's 24 hours. So for us, a day is how long it takes us to rotate. Rotate means spin around in place. So for us, it takes us 24 hours to rotate in one place, but 365 days to go around the sun. Each planet is different. Some planets rotate 59 days. So if Mercury rotates very, 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 very slowly, same with Venus, it takes them 59 or 243 days to spin around, something that we do in 24 hours. But then Jupiter, you see how short it is. Jupiter is six, uh, sorry, nine hours, 50 minutes. So it rotates two and a half times faster than we rotate. Eccentricity is our next big topic after that. Uh, and then a couple other things. You're gonna have an assignment in your, in your folder that deals with this chart. And then Pluto, we talked about Pluto once before. So in terms of dwarf planets, um, most of them are located, like I said, in that Kuiper Belt area out in here past Neptune, but there is one series that's located over here in the asteroid belt. Why don't you guys watch this video really quickly?
You may have noticed that we now have only eight planets in our solar system. Most of us grew up with nine. Pluto was the ninth, but it's no longer a planet. I'll explain why not. And also, if Pluto is no longer a planet, just what is it? Pluto was discovered back in 1930 and added to the list of planets. Its orbit is a strange one, taking it for a time closer to the Sun than Neptune. But more of its time is spent beyond Neptune, all by itself. At least we thought it was by itself. In the early 1990s, two smaller objects were found in orbits near Pluto's, in what is now called the Kuiper Belt. These discoveries were followed by more objects in the Kuiper Belt, all smaller in dimensions and less massive than Pluto. But even then, some astronomers questioned if Pluto should be considered just another Kuiper Belt object instead of a planet. And this wasn't the first time something like this had happened. In 1801, a new object was discovered orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. It was given the name Ceres. During the early 1800s, Ceres, along with its neighbors Pallas, Juno, and Vesta, were considered planets. But that changed with the discovery after 1845 of many more of what are now called asteroids, also orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. After that, Ceres and the rest were reclassified from planets to asteroids in what is now called the Asteroid Belt. So it was natural that many would question whether Pluto should still be called a planet, given that many more objects were found around its orbit. Pluto's status as a planet was then put under even more pressure in January 2005 when Ares was discovered in the Kuiper Belt. Ares is practically the same diameter as Pluto, but its mass is around 25% more due to its higher density. The discovery of this more massive object alongside Pluto meant that either Ares should be added to the list of planets or Pluto should be reclassified to something else. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, convened to decide just what the definition of a planet should be. The final decision was that a planet should meet three criteria. One, a planet is in orbit around the Sun. Check, Pluto orbits the Sun. Two, the planet has sufficient mass for its own gravity to pull it into a nearly round shape. Check, Pluto's gravity has made it nearly round. And three, the planet has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. This is done either through collisions or redirecting objects away. And this is where Pluto fails. Pluto accounts for only a small fraction of the mass around its orbit. To put this into perspective, there are thousands of relatively small asteroids called near-Earth objects around Earth's orbit. But the Earth's mass is 1.7 million times the rest of the mass in its orbit. On the other hand, you'd need around 14 Plutos to equal the mass of everything else in its orbit. So if Pluto isn't a planet anymore, what is it? At the same meeting of the IAU, a new classification was formalized, called a dwarf planet. What's a dwarf planet? A dwarf planet is one that meets the same first two criteria for a planet, but has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit, just as Pluto hasn't. Plus a fourth criteria. A dwarf planet is not a satellite, like our moon is a satellite of the Earth. Check. Pluto isn't a satellite of any other object, other than the sun, that is. So Pluto is a dwarf planet, and so are Ceres and Eris. As of now, there are only a handful of dwarf planets, but it's suspected that there may be up to 200 in the Kuiper Belt, and maybe even more than 10,000 when objects outside the belt are considered. So yeah, uh, and one of the things about it, as you see a lot of times, is Jupiter, oh, I'm sorry, is it said Pluto's uh, orbit is so different than the others. So here are some of the other dwarf planets you can see there. There's a fun one here called Quarwar and Maki Maki couple more names uh, and sizes. All right, so your assignment then is to go back into the folder and find the information that deals with the uh, work that goes with the solar system data chart. Have a good day.